We are pressing right along to communication. Lawyers spend the vast amount of their time communicating in one form or another. At, at its most fundamental, I kind of view our role as translators. We take something in one form and we run it through a process of some kind and then we have an output which delivers it in another form. How do we do that? We might do legal research, we turn it into a letter of advice that gets consumed by our client in a more approachable way. The same information is there, but it has been translated in a manner that can be consumed by our client. It works in reverse too. We take our client's instructions, we put those instructions inside the legal framework that we function in, and we output the necessary things to make that happen. Maybe we fill out forms, maybe we draft legal documents, maybe we send correspondence. Whatever it may be, we're translating a desire over here to an outcome over here. This is the role at its most fundamental of every lawyer. We translate things for consumption by other people, and as a consequence, communication is a vastly important area of legal practice, and one which is woefully ignored in law school. We're going to deal with that shortly, but for now I wanted to deal with the three main pieces of communication, and I have already alluded to them. They are on the one hand consumption, whether it is listening, or reading, or interviewing, or looking at, whatever it is, at some point in the process, we take information in. We then run it through our internal processes in order to understand it and comprehend it, and analyze it and digest it in some way. And then we output it in whatever the other method of output is that we're is expected on the other side. Input, digestion, I'll call it, and output. These are the three pieces of the communication puzzle, and these are what you're going to be doing pretty much on a daily basis as a legal professional. So if you can master these processes and understand at each step of the way how you're going to actually do that better, then you're going to become a much better communicator. We're going to deal with a few specific examples, but I just encourage you to start thinking about communication in this particular way. Your homework for today is this. Which part of the communication process do you think you are lacking in, and which part do you think you're very good at? Are you an excellent consumer of information, but you struggle to output it in a way that seems to be approachable by its intended audience? Maybe you're excellent at doing this side of things, or digesting information if someone else gives it to you, but you're not good at diligently actually getting the information in the first place. Maybe it's a mix of all of the above. Whatever it might be, what are your strengths and weaknesses in communication? Where can you put your attention and what would you like to focus on? A lot of people at this point are going to say, I want to draft better. And I know legal drafting is a huge issue for many people and they struggle with it. That's fair enough, but you cannot ignore the importance of being able to listen and to read diligently because without the right input, nothing that comes out the other end could possibly be correct. Think about that, think about the homework, and I'll see you soon.